In today's video, we're gonna discuss how to set up the proper amount of protein, how to avoid snacking and make your hunger situation a little bit better between meals, and are your calories too high or too low? And we're starting right now. Hey guys, this is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're gonna discuss a couple different topics, and I wanna get into those topics quickly, but first of all, go to my Instagram, direct message. That's where I'm getting these questions from, guys. So I like to answer the questions directly there, or I'll make a YouTube video about the topics. Now, I'm gonna combine a few topics today just to ensure that I'm getting you guys all the answers you need for your goals for this year. When setting your daily protein macro, should you use your current weight, your lean body mass, or your goal weight to calculate it? Example, 220 pounds, body weight, 23% body fat, set it to 220 grams of protein, current weight, or 190 grams, goal weight, thanks for everything. Great question about protein. So I love the idea of actually just taking your target weight for where you would like to set your protein. Why? Because we know if you set your target weight at a number, it's a number that is going to be above your lean body mass. And lean body mass is really what they use for the RDAs for protein. And we as bodybuilders tend to go a little bit over what the RDA suggests. But research has shown that if you stick to that number right around your target weight, you're gonna be getting plenty of protein for building muscle, preventing muscle breakdown. And also, it's gonna help with satiety. Great question. Quick question from your last video. What are some ways to get over hunger or snacking throughout the day while staying full from meals? So some great ways to get over snacking during the day are to have larger meals. Hunger is most closely associated with our pattern of eating. If you're used to eating a meal and then eating a snack, your body is going to remember that signal and it's going to signal you to be hungry during that time. One of the things that I really like to do when I'm going through, through this transition phase where I'm trying to avoid snacking, first things first is, you know, I try to not keep the snacks handy. If it requires me to do something like get up and go figure it out or go buy it, there's a lot less likelihood that I'm gonna worry about. Second, and probably my favorite thing, is I like low calorie beverages, zero calorie beverages, okay? They can be anything from sparkling waters to diet sodas to branched chain amino acids. Sometimes just the sensation of something sweet and a fluid, it can kind of hold you over and get rid of that hunger signal. If you are going to snack or you want to plan to snack, having some low calorie snacks available is a great idea. Fruits and vegetables. One of my favorite is air popped popcorn. It's got a little bit of fiber, pretty low carb uh, for the amount of volume that you get. But the idea is that you can change your eating patterns based on your body signals. If you eat large, really good macronutrient based meals where you're getting a full meal, you're gonna be full for a while, then you can kind of split something up for the next meal, like a drink, like a beverage, uh, and it'll get you through to that next meal. Hopefully that helps. Currently on a cut, however, I'm conscious of shaving too many calories off. I'm currently at 2,750 per day. I'm losing weight, which is good. This may sound silly, but seeing people at extreme ends of the spectrum is making me question if my calories are too high. What are your thoughts? I'm 5'11", around 80 to 82 kilos, well-trained, but have always lost the weight I've lost through yo-yo dieting. So you said you're at 2,750 calories and you're losing weight. You also said that you tend to lose the body fat through crash dieting and then gain it back. Well, I think you kind of answered your own question here you should not be crash dieting weight off. Now by crash dieting, I mean very low caloric approaches to weight loss because although you're gonna see the number on the scale go down, what tends to happen is we have a severely suppressed metabolic rate by the end of this. So you're conserving a lot of energy, your, your digestion's gonna be a little bit slower, and you're also potentially gonna be losing lean body mass because if you're conserving energy, your workouts might suffer. You might even start skipping the workouts. So in spite of the fact that the scale is going down, you're actually losing muscle and potentially putting yourself in a worse place where when you put the body fat back on, you're gonna have less muscle. Instead, focus on losing one to one and a half percent of your body weight per week. Focus on dieting on as many calories and as little cardio as possible. When you have to make adjustments, 
make small two to 300 calorie adjustments along with some smaller adjustments to cardio, adding 10 to 15 minutes to each cardio session. This way, you just keep ticking forward. You don't ever get to a place where you're crashing. And if you reach a point where you're starting to feel fatigued and run down, I have a lot of documents and a lot of videos on things called refeeds, where we bring up the carbohydrates, or diet breaks, where we actually decrease the cardio and bring up the calories for a shortened period of time back to maintenance. Now understand that maintenance is a moving target. It's not maintenance from when you started, it's an adjusted number. And I have videos on this concept of diet breaks, but this has been the biggest game changer for me and my clients as far as successful long-term dieting and then coming out of the diet successfully because was it really successful if you lost 30 pounds but then you put back on 35? No, it's successful if you lose 30 pounds and then you come out of it and you put on only a couple pounds and you can maintain with less body fat, more muscle and feel great about it. I'm really interested in getting to know about your January 15th transformation challenge. I know that I can't enter it as I'm from across the Atlantic Ocean all the way in South Africa. I'd just like to know what you guys are planning to do and how. Great question. Yes, the transformation challenge is about to commence. It's a 90 day transformation challenge where we basically have a private group on Facebook where we're going to give you guys all the advice you need, all the help. We have 23 dedicated coaches for Pro Physique that are going to be providing support, but we also provide nutrition and training plans. Now, we do give away $50,000 in cash and prizes, so there are some rules to follow if you want to enter with the idea of winning. If you just want to be a part of the group, then you don't have to worry, but if you're not, you want to enter properly, making sure you submit your pictures on time. All those rules are listed in the link below, very clearly defined. We're also, once you sign up, going to send you an email with all of this information and confirm, get you in the Facebook group. We will be sending out the card for you to take your starting pictures with in only a few days. So if you guys are interested in the transformation challenge, I suggest you get in it pretty soon. Guess what guys? It's open worldwide and girls. So as long as you can watch this video, you can enter the challenge. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys have an awesome Tuesday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.